Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk to you about microphone combiners, why you may want to use them and under what circumstances you probably do not want to use them. So I have two of these. These are actually from a company called Rolls. Uh, they have a newer model, which is actually a mic combiner and a mic splitter. But I use two of these on my setup when I'm at my home studio here and when I'm practicing with my band, The Grey Curtain. We record every practice that we, we do. I throw a ton of mics on at the end of rehearsal. I usually throw the projects away, but sometimes I have to keep them for a little while. With the number of tracks that I'm recording, the amount of space can really start to add up. So I use a pair of these to just reduce down by two channels the number of tracks that I'm recording with. It's uh, very helpful in that sort of circumstance. You know, I'm not going for the highest quality when I'm just doing the band practice recording. When I'm doing the real recording, I would never use one of these. So that's one circumstance right there that you don't, you definitely don't want to use these on. These are for, you know, quick and dirty uh, situations where you're just trying to throw some channels up. You want to get some rough recording, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So how I use these is to actually combine down my Tom tracks. Uh, I actually have, I've modded it as you can see and so it fits nicely on my drum rack and I usually have the pair of them on my rack. So I combine toms one and two, the microphones from them, into one of these to get that down to one signal and I have another one of these boxes like I said and I combine toms three and four down through another box into one signal. So I'm running four mics for my toms but only two signals are being used when I'm doing my band practice recordings. If you go to use one of these, I do recommend following that sort of paradigm, something where the sound source volume is gonna be similar, where you might be using the same mics. You gotta be careful of the position, obviously, since you don't have a different gain stage per microphone. Just make sure that the, the mics are roughly, you know, equidistant from the head. Like I said earlier, this is just for, you know, something quick and dirty. I'm not gonna use this for a uh, album release. Sometimes when I do these drum videos, I actually do the combined mic stuff. Um, just again, because a lot of times when I'm doing these videos, I might be doing something quick and dirty too. But when I do something, you know, when I do the real deal, I'm actually running 18 mics. Um, and I'm using every single channel I can, all, all my preamps and everything else. So like I said, this can help save the amount of hard drive space you're using up if you're going through a lot of projects that you're just gonna kind of throw away but you may not be able to get rid of right away. The other thing that might be helpful is if you just don't have enough inputs. Maybe um, you have enough inputs to just record your drums on a normal basis. But if you have your band over and you're trying to record everyone at, at the same time for rehearsal, maybe you don't have enough, enough inputs to add everyone in. Another case that might be helpful is there's been this big rise of, you know, these online collaborative band practices, you know, with uh, right now when I'm, I'm filming this, it's, uh, it's late March and uh, my state is kind of under uh, a lockdown because of the COVID-19 thing. A lot of people are trying to do the online band practice stuff. And, uh, you know, maybe you, your audio interface is very limited in the number of tracks that you can record. So using something like this, if you don't have the budget to get a, a better or bigger audio interface, this might be something where, you know, you can pump more microphones into the mix that you're using for that collaborative um, purpose. So when else would you not want to use this? So like I said, quick and dirty is great. The collaborative band practice thing, great. High quality professional recording, you're not gonna wanna use these on. You're also gonna wanna make sure that you use these with dynamic mics. Condenser mics, if you're not familiar, those microphones require phantom power and that power runs up through the ground wire. Because of how these get combined, the ground wire runs through from, uh, from one input to the output. So I think on how I have it set up here, it's, um, it's wired as uh, input two, I think goes to the output. That means input one, the ground is actually not connected and phantom power can't get through. So you can't actually power the microphone. Now you could get a separate 
Phantom Power brick and put it on the other side of the combiner, but that starts to get kind of a little hairy. So do you have any little home recording tricks that you like to use? If you do, let me know in the comments below. We'll start up a conversation and don't forget to subscribe.